Hey everybody, it's Chef Alyssa from Cafe WT. Today I'm gonna go over some knife skills for a stir fry. But first, let's get into the safety in the kitchen. So I've got a silicone mat here. You could use a wet towel. Um, you would wanna put it underneath your cutting board. It keeps it from moving. Another safety tip for the kitchen, um, don't have a dull knife. A dull knife is the worst thing you can have. My weapon of choice for today is my Santoku chef's knife and I've got a honing steel here. So the first thing you want to do to make sure that your dull knife, you can kind of see it when you look at the knife that the edges are not sharp and they're not straight. So that's an indication that you need to hone your knife. So you would want to hold the steel like this and at a 22 and a half degree angle you want to go on one side and the other side. You want to have even amount of strokes for your knife. This is just to make sure that your blade is straight. So my blade is straight, I'm ready to go. So now that I've straightened my blade, I'm going to go over a chef's grip. So you want to have the handle right here. You're holding the knife like this. Your thumb goes on the blade at the top of the blade and your index finger goes right here on the other side of the blade. So this is what we call a chef's grip. It's easier to control the blade as you're cutting things like this, whereas when you're holding it just like this. This way, you're not having any balance and it's harder to cut this way because your knife is gonna go either or and also that's, it might cut your finger off. So now that we've gone over the chef's grip, let's go over the helping hand. So this hand will help guide your knife as you're chopping vegetables. It's also very important that you curl in your fingertips like a claw to avoid any accidents. So as you're chopping, you're gonna use this finger to guide your knife. I have some vegetables that I soaked in a bowl for two to three minutes. It's important that you get rid of any contaminants. After that, I pat them dry because we don't want the vegetables to slip on the board. Now let's get into the mise en place for the stir fry. When chopping your vegetables, you always want to keep your cuts consistent for the cooking process. I've got a carrot that I peeled and cleaned off the top. We're going to, just to make sure that the carrot isn't rolling, we're going to cut it in half. So I like to cut it in half first and then half again. So for the carrot, we're going to cut these in half moons. So now seeing that my carrot cut looks like this, we want to keep all the rest of our cuts consistent. Next vegetable that I'm going to cut, I've got an onion that I've taken out the outer layer. I've also chopped off the bottom of it. You want to keep on this top piece because if you check, the onion, you've got the root that holds on to the onion and it allows it to keep everything together. So you, when you're chopping it, it stays all together. So how I'm going to chop the onion, I'm going to chop the onion into a medium dice. I've got to think about how I cut the carrot and I want to keep everything the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice in the middle. Slice again at the top and this should allow the same size with the carrot. Next vegetable that I'm going to cut is my bell peppers. So the bell pepper, you want to cut off the top and the bottom. These pieces we can save. Cut through and then just slide your knife to cut out the seeds and the membrane. So you've got a whole piece. Now we're going to cut the bell pepper in half so it's easier to chop into. I like to sort of get these flat pieces and you can always 
place them on top of each other so we can get a nice little dice. And it's a little more efficient this way. So I'm going to do another medium dice like I did with the onion. And then we'll do a green pe bell pepper for some green color in there. Hold on to the tops. You got any seeds in there, I would remove those. next vegetable that I'm going to cut into is my zucchini. So I'm going to cut off the top, bottom, and we want them like the carrot since they're both round. We want to cut it into a half moon as well. We can hold these two pieces together and just start chopping into it. Got a yellow squash here. It's the same as the zucchini and the carrot. So cut off the top and the bottom as well. Half moon again. next vegetable that we're going to slice into would be the mushroom. The mushroom is a little different. So we just want to quarter these because we want these to be the same. So just like how we have like these thick cuts here, we don't want to actually slice the mushroom, we just want to quarter it. So we have the And next, we've got some garlic here. I love a lot of garlic, so garlic is a really good aromatic flavor. I have them peeled, keep the top on again. This is a very important piece. It's just like the onion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice through just like we did with the onion, almost like creating a grid. This way we have basically minced garlic.
Now let's get into the other ingredients that we're going to add into the stir fry. So I've got two ounces of soy sauce mixed with a half tablespoon of sugar. I've got mirin, two ounces of canola oil mixed with some sesame oil, black pepper, and salt. So now we're going to get our pan heated up. You want to wait a couple of seconds for it to heat up. You don't want to add oil directly into the pan because you want the pan to heat up first. So we're going to wait about a few minutes for it to get heated up. So now my pan has been heating for a few minutes. I've got the heat on medium high. I'm going to throw some of that oil in. You want your oil to look like, just like how you've waxed the car. It should look shiny. We're going to start with the onions and carrots. So these veggies are a little firmer, so we want to start with those veggies first. We want the caramelization to set on the veggies. You can kind of see it on the onions here and the carrots. I'm going to throw in my bell peppers now. I don't want to overcrowd the pan, so I'm only going to add in a little bit of the squash and the zucchini. The squash and the zucchini have a lot of water in it, so we don't need to let it cook too much before we add the mushrooms and the garlic. Being able to toss the vegetables in a pan took a lot of practice, so go for it. If you're going to do it, just go for it. You can start seasoning a little bit of salt and pepper. We still want a nice crunch to our veggies, so we won't cook it till it's mushy. I got a little space here for my mushrooms. I don't add the garlic first because I don't want it to burn. I'm going to add in the garlic now. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells amazing. So as soon as you start to see the garlic brown a little bit, you're going to start deglazing the pan. I usually start with the wine first, which we got here is the mirin. So deglazing the pan, it helps to take off all the flavors that are stuck to the pan. Which is the good thing. You want to take off all that flavor that you got at the bottom of the pan. Now we're going to add in the soy sauce that we mixed with the sugar. I'm going to just pinch of salt one more time and some pepper bring my heat up back once more
One more toss. I'm going to turn it off. And there you go. Quick stir fry, easy peasy, and it looks amazing. Um, if you have any sesame seeds or green onions, you can go ahead and garnish on top. You can enjoy your stir fry with some noodles or some rice and have a great meal with your family and friends. Thanks for tuning in with me.